Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. I'm Pastor George Pearsons. This is my wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, and we are glad to be on the air with you today. It's a great joy to be in front of this camera and in front of you for all this time that we've been here on the Believer's Voice of Victory. And we hope that you've been blessed too. In fact, we'd like to hear from you. You know, when you could drop us a line, drop us an email, make a contact, send us a note, do something to let us know what the Word has been bringing to you on the Believer's Voice of Victory, maybe over a long period of time, or maybe just what Pastor mm -hmm. George and I have been on. We've certainly enjoyed doing it. I want to remind you that you can go to kcm.org slash notes and not only get the notes from these two weeks of broadcast that we've done on the life of forgiveness, but also the resources there so you can continue your study and feeding your faith on the love of God. Things that you can purchase, things that you can download, I uh, just want to be a help to you in an ongoing way. And I want to remind you that tomorrow we're receiving communion. So begin right now. Get your communion elements together. Be ready to take communion with us tomorrow and experience the power of God and the forgiveness of God. I know we can receive forgiveness anytime, anytime. but there's something about all of us gathering together with the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is our very own world communion service, yeah, if you right. will, no. um, that people around the world are going to be taking that's communion right. together. together. So that's tomorrow. Be ready for that. Today, we're talking about the subject of the life of forgiveness and particularly about putting things under the blood. Now, let me tell you where this study came from. Uh, it was on Sunday, October the 1st of 2023. I was preaching a message in church about letting the past go, uh, receiving forgiveness for things of the past. And what we normally do on a Sunday is, I'll finish the message, we might do a song or we might minister or something, and then I'll have Pastor Terry come up and we'll close out the service together. Well, that particular morning, um, I sensed that she would have something to say, to add to it, and she did. And what I did was I went back, she really didn't know that I did this, but I went back and I went to the, uh, I went to the service I, I did a transcript, I typed out a transcript of what she said, and then I organized it into an outline, and it turned out to be this. So this, this is and the, the, link, the, the link to that service yeah. is in the resources It is well. in the resources, so they can get the service. So I just wanted to set that up, Terry, because I thought it was so outstanding what you brought that day within well, a 10 minute period of time. The, the, a whole message came out of that, and that's what we want to present to you today. So I present to you my wife's message <laughs> outline, which I get to that help her Lord. with. That was the Lord. That <laughs> was the Lord. It was the Lord, definitely. And that, you know what I just want to say, too? But I love doing these broadcasts together because what we'll do is oftentimes George is great. He initiates these outlines. He gives them to me, and then I go back and look at them and add things to them and then give them back to him, and he may add more to it. And we bring them to you that way. And so I, I, I think that's a... Um, in other words, you're getting two for the price of one yeah, here. <laughs> it's definitely a collaborative effort that we are, yes. we are doing. So with that, Terry, I'd like you to go ahead and, and begin because this is, the, we will learn something important today about putting unforgiveness or under the blood. Amen. So, I wanna pray. Yeah. Father, I'm asking for a Thank free you, flow Jesus. of utterance in this yes, broadcast Lord. today, especially today, Praise Lord. God. And I pray that the people that are watching, Thank that you, their Lord. ears are open, their hearts are open, oh, and that, Lord, today there is a move all across this nation, all around the world, <clears throat> yes. as we focus Thank and you, give Lord. much attention to the blood of Jesus. Amen. In the name Thank of you, Jesus, Lord. amen. Amen. The Lord told Sister Billy Brim, make much of the blood, and the blood will make much of you. Mm. So in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, <laughs> There is a scripture and it starts off with how much more? Well, how much more than what? Well, verse 13 references the blood of bulls and goats, which was under the first covenant. And, and the Bible says without blood, there's really no purification. There's no forgiveness yeah. Yeah. without that. So he said, but, and that, that helped people to a point, but it was very limited and short lived. But how much more shall the blood of Christ yeah who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works 
to serve the living God. That's the end point in all of this, is for us to serve God. Yeah. Not because he just wants servants, but because in serving him, there's life. In serving him, joy, peace, all the abundance of heaven itself is made available in our service to him. So he says, though, that this is to cleanse your conscience. Cleanse your thinking, cleanse your conscience mind, cleanse your awareness. And he takes the sin out of that. You say, well, you know, I, I remember things that I did in the past. Uh, and how do you forget those? Some things he will completely remove from your memory. But I think about the awful things that the Apostle Paul did. But you know what? He, he, and he, he repeated them three times in the book of Acts. But the sting of sin was gone. The sin was completely removed from it. Out of his conscience, no awareness of sin anymore. The blood of Jesus separated him from it. You might be thinking, well, how can the blood of Jesus, something Jesus did, something anybody did 2,000 years ago, really make any difference to me now? How, how, how can I, is that just fabricated, just something I work up? No. Notice in this, it says, who through the eternal spirit. It was a work, not only by faith, but a work of the spirit. Through the eternal spirit. Isaiah 57, 15 says, God inhabits eternity. What does that mean? That means he lives throughout all of it. He is as much alive in our past as he is our present and as much alive in our future as he is right now. God is not bound by time. He doesn't travel the timeline. He's not dependent on the timeline as we picture ourselves being. He is alive. That's why something that you did can be, he is alive in that past moment and can extract the sin from it so that it has no further sting. He took the sin out of Paul's murderous actions mm. and turned it into a testimony to bring people to the Lord. And that, that action then, he's alive in it now unto God. The same thing is true with the blood of Jesus. Yes. God, what Jesus did, he did through the, the eternal quality, the <laughs> eternal nature, the eternal scope and ability and, and unfathomable power of the Holy Spirit and God did that and it stays alive all the way through this process of time. It's unaffected by time. Neither are the things of God. Yeah. The blood's unaffected by time. The name, everything Jesus ever did is unaffected by time. It's as much alive now as it was when he did it. So we can now talk about three things to put by faith under the blood. All right, the first thing, Mark eleven twenty five. First of all, put what others have done under the blood, put what others have done under the blood. Verse 25 of Mark 11 says in the Amplified Classic, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it, let it go, in order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. So the first thing that we do to let that go, and I love the way you had put this together. You, I mean, you were just saying this by unction of the Spirit, mm -hmm. but it's really, really practical what you said here. Um, the first thing we do is to let that go. And then you said, call their name. And put what out loud. That, out loud, call their name out loud. And put what that person said or did under Jesus' blood. So give them an example. I mean, don't call a name out loud, but just give them an example of how you, how you would do that. Um, I would say, Lord, what Mr. Smith did, yeah. those words that he did, that action, yes. and my thinking of it, my feelings for it, my attitude about it, Lord, all of that, I put it under the blood That's good. in the name of Jesus. That's good. And Dad called it a blanket of blood. Blanket. But this blanket of blood, it... it, it suffocates. Yeah. It's like those uh, fire extinguishing yeah, I thinking, blanklets. Yes, I was thinking it about that. It suffocates. Yep. It suffocates that that sin. It yeah. suffocates the offense. Yep. It suffocates the the ugliness of it and the hatred it, and you you <laughs> keep it there. You don't draw right. it out. Then you said put those hurt feelings under the blood. Put offense 
under the blood. Put anger under the blood. Put unforgiveness towards others under the blood. When you have faith in the blood, and this is the thing that we want to bring out, is with all of these things, you've got to realize that when you release your faith in the blood to do these things, they will happen. Mm -hmm. It will take place. This is not make-believe. This is something that we don't just make up. This is a spiritual action that we put in effect to be able to take care of those spiritual things in our lives that need to be cleaned out. Put the hurt feelings under the blood. Lord, what they did, what they said, how, they, how I felt, when they said that, I put it under the blood of Jesus right now. Yep. And we hold it there yeah. with our confession of yeah. faith. No, that's under the blood. And your mind tries to remember yeah. it and it will try to retrieve that. Yeah. No, that's under the blood. Yeah. That's under the blood. Now, sometimes <clears throat> things still have to be confronted. They have to be talked about. Yeah. Uh, things have to be worked out. But you can, ex you can have, just like God, extract <laughs> the yeah. pain out of that mm -hmm. and enforce it under the blood. The unforgiveness yeah. is what you're wanting to keep under the blood. That's yeah. under the blood. That's under the blood. And it's a, it is a process. And I know somebody that um, uh, over the years, this, this mother and father uh, had a grown son and he, he was married and somehow, some way, there was a separation, there was a division that took place. And the father and the mother so desperately wanted to have a relationship with him, but there was just a strife in there. So what they had to do was forgive by faith and literally put it Keep under it the blood of the Jesus. Blood. Yep. And what that did was it started a process, the process of forgiveness. And in that process of forgiveness, uh, I'll never forget this. He told me the story about what happened. It was at Christmas time, and the son and the daughter decided to go visit the mother and father. They had not talked about it. They didn't go to counseling. They didn't do any of that. But they knocked on the door. The moment the parents opened the door, they walked in and it was like the past disappeared. Everything was forgiven. And from that point on in their lives, they walked together with each other. Now the parents are in heaven, but, but before they left this earth, there was a reconciliation that took place. But by keeping it under the blood before that ever Keep happened, it. and yeah. if it had never happened, yeah. they stayed in a right place before God and, and had their hearts in the protected. I guess so we have we faith going here. in the blood. Yeah, go ahead. So what else do we put under the blood? We put what we did under the blood. That, that re, re, process of renewing of the mind, which eradicates that evil consciousness of of sin, uh, that, of things that we did, keeping that under the blood, yeah. keeping it under the blood. So when the devil tries to torment you, you know, this is the way the devil does. He lures you off into, into sin. He lures you off into unforgiveness, anger, strife, pride, bitterness, selfishness, immoralities, all kinds of things. He pulls you, come on, come on, come on. It won't hurt, it won't hurt. Then when you do that, he look at what you did, look at what mm -hmm. you did, look at what you did. Mm -hmm. So you've got to put all of that over under the blood. Yeah. The blood of Jesus cleanses me from all unrighteousness. And he said he's faithful and just to forgive. I hold that under the blood. Yeah. And so you can, these are the things that uh, I've had, I just say these things myself. I don't want to be connected anymore to what I did. Yeah. I don't want to be connected to how I behaved, what I said, the feelings I had, the anger, the resentment. I don't want to. I, I don't want to be connected to smoking those cigarettes anymore. I don't want to be connected to that alcohol. I don't yeah. want to be connected yeah. to uh, pornography. I don't want to be connected to anger. I don't want to be connected to pride. I don't want to be connected to selfishness. I don't want to be connected to those things that are unlovely. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. I for, ask for forgiveness of that. You cleanse me, Lord, and I put it under the blood. Amen. You hear that? You hear that desire? Mm -hmm. You hear that lust of the flesh? You hear that pressure? Get off me in Jesus' name. I put what I was dealing with, it's mm -hmm. under the blood, and it starts to surface again. Nope. That is under the blood, under the blood, under the blood. Under the blood. Third, we put the guilt and the condemnation of what we did under the blood. Now, 
sometimes we have to receive our forgiveness and then we feel like we need to continually beat ourselves up. I think about this, Terry, this example of my mother mm. and how, and I've shared this before, and, and my mother, I was able to get my mother saved before I went to Oral Roberts University and, and we had a great time. However, she had a little bit of a temper when I was growing up and uh, <laughs> a little bit. Italian, um, come on. Yeah. She, had, and she was feisty. She was feisty and she would get upset with me and I, honestly, I probably can't blame her for maybe some of the things that I did. But as we grew older and I grew more mature, uh, we would go visit them on holidays. And, and my mother, sometimes she took, she'd pull me aside and she just looked down and she said, George, I am so sorry. I am so sorry for the way I treated you, the way I treated you growing up. And I had to literally convince her, mother, it's over, it's done. You probably got upset because I did things wrong. I said, let it go, let's just let it go. And Terry, she would do that. Um, times that we would go out there, she kept beating herself up over things that happened in the past, carrying the guilt, carrying the shame. And that is not what God wants us to do. And really, I felt like I was God himself with my mother, endeavoring to let her know, that's behind us, that's over, that's done. I don't even think about it. I only think about the good times that we've had together. So it really took some convincing, but, but we have to continually stay on top of that so that we don't beat ourselves up concerning it. You know, this quote from Brother Copeland, uh, your this dad. This is powerful, you should write it down. Self-evaluation in the presence of faith is a good thing, but apart from faith, it is condemnation, and that is demonic. And you said, what makes it demonic? Because the devil keeps using it. Every time you do that, it interferes and interrupts your ability uh, not only to receive forgiveness from the Lord, but interrupts your ability to live and walk by faith. The past, carrying the past that you've already been forgiven of on your shoulders. It condemns your conscience. And without a clear conscience, you can't receive what you should receive. But Hebrews 9.14 in the Amplified Classic, he offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice to God to purify our consciences. Yeah, uh, to cleanse your conscience, to, to get get that to where whatever memories you do have, they don't carry they don't carry that burden and that that weight. But you know, there are some things that need to not even be a memory that you could dig up anymore. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. some of you live under the fear mm. of being exposed for things that you did. And you know what? There's a scripture for that. The secret things belong to the Lord. Yeah. And you give that to Him. Then, then you don't have any fear of it. Yeah, but this one knows about it and that one knows about it. And what if they found out and what if they said, have no fear? Have no fear. Why? If you were ever confronted about it, you can say, you know what? I absolutely, I did that. Mm -hmm. But that was that old man. Well, you were a Christian then. Yep, but you know what? That was the old man's behavior. Yeah. Yeah. And I picked it up again and I did it. But thank yeah. God for the blood of Jesus and turn it to yeah. a testimony. Yeah. Thank God for the blood of Jesus that cleansed me from that. Thank God. And if I was to do it again tomorrow, you know, when my heart is right before him, yeah. thank God he will forgive me again. Now, what you can't do mm. is continue to commit sin. I've heard people say this, well, we'll just sin and ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> As my uh, dad would say, no. that old dog won't hunt. Uh -uh. You can't you, uh -uh. you can't keep doing that. that. That'll catch up with you. Why? Because there's no real repentance in that. Right. You know, God knows. And if your heart doesn't change, if your heart doesn't convict you, then, then, Forgiveness, you won't be able to receive it. Receive forgiveness comes when you say, you know what, I don't want to be connected to that anymore. Right. And if anybody continues and wants to pursue sin, then you have to really question whether or not they're born again. Now, there are some people, their addiction is so intense, they don't want to do it, but it, they don't know how to be free. Yeah. Well, God can set them free, but he knows the heart and you keep your heart right before the Lord. Exactly. Better and what we in. have to do is we have to focus on who we are in Christ. That has to be the primary thinking that we operate in with him. So why, why is it important to let go of those things on purpose? What we do when it comes back to our minds, it'll very, and it very likely will come back to our minds. We have to say, no, 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 that is under the blood. That is under the blood. 
We have to do that. And it may be the forgiveness of someone else or God's forgiveness of us. You just say out loud, no, that is under the blood. We've done that over and over and over again through the years. So now let's put that back with the things that we've been talking about for the last two weeks. It's so important to have that clear because not only do you want to keep for Mm. lay hold on forgiveness and hang on to it uh, for yourself as well as unforgiveness you hold on to the forgiveness and let go of the unforgiveness that you might have towards others why so that healing you can maintain it because that if you healing comes by faith Mm -hmm. people get healed and lose their healing yeah They lose it. You know, God did something, but they may lose it and find themselves back in the same situation or worse. Why? A great part of it is because of unforgiveness and strife. And uh, we have to stay in line with love himself because love is not only the one who gives the healing that you received, but he's the maintainer of it. That's right. And so we, we, forgiveness and uh, being separated from unforgiveness go hand in hand with all the other blessings of the Lord. Answer prayer. Remember in James it says, and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes power available, dynamic in its working. That just means when you have confessed your faults to the Lord and received forgiveness, confessed your faults to others and received forgiveness, and you've got the love flow happening, power becomes available, not only for healing, but for all other things Everything. in this life, healing, Everything. not only for yourself, yeah. but the ability to minister healing to the people around you, the ability to receive from God whatever your needs are, yes. as well as receiving for God from God on behalf of other people. And if you don't flow that way, God can't get it to you. Unforgiveness on your part keeps forgiveness from God from from being able to reach you. Right, so Terry, what I'd like to do in the last couple of minutes of our teaching is would you lead them in a declaration of putting these things under the blood? I think we need to say it out loud. So would you do that? Okay, so just in your mind for that this moment, think about mm. that enorm- enormous river mm. of the blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. And see yourself. Thank you, See, and remember, that's not a pool of blood. It's a flow of it's blood. It's a flow. It's a, on the altars of the Old Testament, yeah. they yeah. would cut the blood so that it would flow. Yeah. And it flowed down the altar. That blood is flowing. And as that river flows by, stand on the edge, the river bank of that blood, yeah. and declare, first of all, your, your own sin. And <clears throat> throw it into the river of that blood and say, I cast that into the river of his forgiveness, the blood of his love, the blood of forgiveness. And then that person that you need to forgive, cast that unforgiveness into that river of blood. Yes. Lord, I cast that unforgiveness that I have towards Tom or, or, or Karen, um, Max, Sue, Brenda, anybody. Mm. I cast that cast under the blood under of Jesus the blood. and the blood washes and under carries it away. And I thank you, Father, now. Thank you, Throw Father. yourself, Lord, uh, people, thank you, unto Jesus. the Lord in that river and let it just cleanse you, you of Father. all unrighteousness. Yes, and receive now the healing of the blood, the deliverance of the blood, separated from, you, from every wicked work, separated from sickness, right. sin, demons, oppression, depression, fear, gone down that river of blood. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. God's Word tells us over and over to forgive, but why does it seem so hard to do? You are not alone in your struggle to forgive. With the book, You Can Get Over It by Rick Renner, you'll learn how to walk free of the negative attitudes that have kept you bound and bitter. The devil would like nothing more than to keep you down in unforgiveness and misery. Don't let him. In this book, Rick Renner describes how life change comes from a heart change. Jesus understands your emotions, frustrations, and temptations, and still calls us to forgive because it's freedom for you. Walk through the 10 powerful steps to keep your heart free from bitterness and strife. Forgive and see a breakthrough in your health, finances, and relationships. Don't let the devil have a stronghold in your life. No offense is worth sabotaging your future. Pray the prayer of forgiveness in the back of the book and thrive in a bitterness-free future. 
Start your journey to a life of forgiveness with Rick Renner's book, You Can Get Over It. Get your copy for only $9.99 on kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. Be empowered by God's Word and find out how to make the quality choice to forgive and receive the good things God has for you. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a faith community here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry. Discover new gifts and talents and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. Find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. The Lord really impressed me to offer this book on these broadcasts. This is a comprehensive look into how to forgive, how to get rid of bitterness by Rick Renner. And in it, he has a four page prayer that can be prayed. And let me read the last part of this prayer. It's, it's based really on what we talked about today. He says here, thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that has the power to cleanse sin and to remove barriers. I ask that you intervene in our hearts and in this situation to turn all of the enemy meant for evil toward our good and your glory. I receive this as done in Jesus' name, wow. amen. This is a must read for us in the days that we are in and to help us to offload and get rid of any bitterness, anger uh, that we have that's been stored up, this book is going to help you do it. And it's a great price on that book, so you, we discounted it, so right. it's easy for you to get right. it. You can order several uh, for family, and I encourage you to do so even for, for Christmas gifts. But then also, when you're doing that, you know, put your gift in for the ministry here, for Kenneth Couple Ministries, Victory Channel, the school. And if you need prayer, I invite you to call the number that's on your screen. We have licensed ministers that are ready and trained in the Word of God and in faith to pray for you and to minister to you. You prayed with with me earlier, but now let us pray for you. And I invite you to do that. You can go to kcm.org for more information or for the office that's nearest you, no matter what country you're in. Until tomorrow, we want you to remember, and I really mean this, really, really remember yes. and think about it. You can't walk around saying, that's nobody right. loves yeah. me. What's that? Yeah. Nobody loves me. Nobody's like me. I think I'll just eat worms. But no, I'm here to tell you that we love you. Yes. And God loves That's you. That's right. And Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls kcm.org your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free.